For over 55 years, Dr. Ed Silvoso has been making a difference in people's lives, working in local churches, the global church at large, as well as working in the marketplace, in economics, and education, all areas of life and difference making. And in the recent years, he has found himself involved in transformational initiatives. And we are delighted to welcome you to 100 Huntley Street. God bless you, Ed. Thank you, Joan. Delightful to have you with us. I am anxious, to, I should mention that you are also the uh, founder and president of Harvest Evangelism and International Transformation Network. In all of these years, you have been sowing great seed. And now you find yourselves at this season of your ministry yes. with some amazing things taking place. You're actually watching churches, leaders, business leaders, government leaders experiencing Christ and in their places of influence becoming right. agents of transformation. Right. Tell us about that. Then we'll have a clip of, of an example of that in a well, moment. If I have to summarize it in one phrase, yeah. my ministry is to help people love Mondays as much as they love Sundays. <laughs> well said. You know, that when they wake up on Monday, they say, thank God it's Monday. Yeah. And we begin with the pastors because they are the key. Yeah. Pastors are the most dedicated people. They pour their, their lives, you know, into a congregation. But in the old paradigm, okay, I'll see you next Sunday. Yeah. And so I tell pastors, I'll show you how to find your Aquila and Priscilla, mm -hmm. and then you go with them into the marketplace. marketplace yeah. And what we have seen, John, in over 300 cities, transformation is happening. First, at the personal level. People find Jesus, they invite Jesus into their heart. But then they invite him into their household. Mm -hmm. And household as you know, in the Bible, it's not only family, but it's workplace, mm -hmm. because people work out of their home. Oh, yeah. And it's so rewarding, John. When, did, when, when did it happen for you that you, began, when did the light turn on that, that yes, the church is like yeah. the, the, the hub, yeah. but, you know, influencing those in yeah. government and yeah. commerce yeah. and yeah. sports yeah. and media and the arts? <laughs> education, they're going out of the spoke, but the church was the yeah. center. When did it spark in your heart and head well, and ministry life? You know, this is the way it works. I'm an evangelist. Right. You know, I come from a family of evangelists. And my wife, brother, is Luis Palau. My brother, Lois, Juan Carlos Ortiz. I bet holidays are <laughs> preaching festivals. So can you imagine? You know, we are talking about leading yeah. souls to Christ. Sure, passion. But then the Lord, through a very dramatic experience, I was given two years to live in 1980, incurable disease, and I have to be pulled out of the game. You know, here you are playing on Super Bowl Sunday and... Sidelined. You know, boom. And God used that, as he always does, to introduce me to the power of prayer like never before. Okay. To really understand intercession. And so one thing led to the other, and when I understood the power of prayer, we built a prayer chapel in my native Argentina mm -hmm. to pray for 108 towns that didn't have a church, began a process through prayer evangelism. Today we have churches in all 109 towns. So I said, okay, prayer works. Right. Then the Lord took us to a city of 400,000 with only 5,143 believers. And there we learned about city reaching. Okay. Today, that city, and I'm not taking the credit, the local pastors deserve it, from 5,000, a quarter of a million people in church. Praise God. So as you can say, I'm at the top of the game, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, an ex. Yeah. And then the Lord rebuked me and said, Ed, read Matthew 28. I'm not talking about cities. I'm talking about nations. Mm -hmm. So then the Lord told me, and this is the turning point that you asked me about. He asked me to reread the Bible but to wear the marketplace paradigm. And I say, why is that? Well, because the theology you have studied is good, but it was written usually by monks or people that have a monastic lifestyle, mm -hmm. theologians and so forth. Right. And then when you go to work on Monday, which was so clear on Sunday, and out of that came my book, Anointed for Business. And as I'm writing that book, Sean, I realized Every revival in the Bible mm -hmm. happened in the marketplace. Yeah. The heroes of the faith, Hebrews 11, they are called by God while they are in the marketplace, and they do their job in the marketplace. Jesus, for 30 years, was a marketplace person. Right. Right. 
right. so were his apostles. And so I had, I don't know what the word is, an epiphany or whatever, where I realized that what I did before going into the ministry, I was a hospital administrator and banker. You're in the marketplace. It was as a spiritual, mm -hmm. as what I was doing then in a stadium or facing a television camera. And that old part of me connected to the current part. Yeah. And my book uh, helped me become free and help pastors free people. And that became the tipping point. I want to look at a clip here in a moment, but let me ask you this. Oftentimes, and you yeah. know this is true, I'm, I'm, I've been in ministry a long yeah. time. Yeah. I am a second generation minister. Kid. Oftentimes, either pastors or intimidated by business yes. people, yes. or business people can be intimidated by the, the, the religious aspect yes. of, of a pastor. How are you working together to bring these two together? Yes. Because yes. it really yes. can be challenging. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and, and this is a solution. The pastors are intimidated by marketplace people, especially the successful ones, mm -hmm. the ones that really bank the church. Right. So I said, don't try to make them ministers inside the building. That's two elephants in a little tiny china shop. Yeah. What you need to do is show <laughs> them that their work is their ministry and that they should go to work and become a pastor. As salt over, and light. Right. Yes. Now, what that does, John, it makes the marketplace person appreciate the pastor more because he realizes how difficult it is to love people that don't listen to you or what have you. To live Christianly in the marketplace. Right. And so the pastor can become a counselor and friend. Yeah, yeah. Well, the pastor actually moves from being the quarterback to the coach. Uh -huh. So he has the playbook, he mm -hmm. calls the play number. But also the marketplace people usually live with a sense of shame, especially those that they are passionate about ministry, but they get this subliminal message, you didn't make the cut, uh, you were not called to the ministry. Yeah. So when the pastor validates them and tells them, you are as much a minister as I am, and I am releasing you to go there. Yeah. Both of them find their temple. That is a great, great perspective. Um, Juarez, Mexico, just across the border, yeah. has been a place that you and your team yeah. have been working for a yeah. while. We want to see a clip. Just yeah. give us a few seconds of yeah. a setup. What are we going to see? Good. Uh, okay. Ciudad Juarez used to be the murder capital of the world. 12,000 murders in less than three years. Not too long ago. Not too long ago. 300,000 people out of a million and a half left the city. I mean, you could smell blood in the air. Today, and you will see just a tiny okay. clip because on our website, they will find the whole documentary. It's the safest city in Mexico. The economy has rebounded. The mayor became a Christian, chief of police became a Christian, attorney general is a Christian, the governor came into the kingdom, and Juarez wow. has become a boom town. Well, let's take a look at this, and, uh, and, and uh, we'll be back and enjoy this, celebrate. Today, Ciudad Juarez is experiencing a renewal so dramatic and powerful that it is no longer the world's most dangerous city. Optimism has begun to return, and as always, begins with prayer. In 2011, I went to a high place in the outskirts of the city. And by God's grace, uh, I made a declaration to adopt the city. I said to the city, you're no longer an orphan. And today I'm in another high place, right in the middle of the city. This is the way God sees our cities. Places where he wants to manifest himself to the church, in the community, in the marketplace, bringing transformation. And it's working. Even the highest authorities can testify to that. Por el poder de Dios, with the power of God and the help of Christians in the city, homicides have decreased by 80%, kidnappings by 100%, and extortions are down by 90%. Now we can say our churches, our streets, and our sport areas have been rescued. As the streets of Juarez have been reclaimed, laughter can once again be heard in the parks and open spaces families are now able to enjoy an outdoor lifestyle 
that was once stolen by cartel violence. So that's transformation. What was uh, the key? Was there a catalytic decision made by a leader or leaders that well, saw that this pastor, conclusion? That pastor, Poncho Murguia, he realized one day, he came to one of our conferences, God called me to pastor the city by equipping the saints that sit under my teaching right. to do the work of the ministry Monday through Saturday. And when he understood that, John, his whole paradigm shifted. And it all comes back to the leader, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. And the leader being open to grow and develop yeah, yeah. and to see the world bigger than just yeah. one's own congregation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how we see Canada, but in America, so many pastors go through burnt out. So many yeah, of them abandon the ministry. Why? I think, John, because when they answer the call, their vision is so huge. They are dreaming of millions. Yeah. And then they get into a structure mm -hmm. that confines them. Yeah. But when they go through a paradigm shift like Poncho Murguia did, they said, I may only have 10,000 people here or 100, but I'm the pastor of a million and a half. Yes, yeah, like the, John Wesley, the world is my parish. Yes, that's, absolutely. And you have to, but, but that's the kind of good work you do. Now, you are about inspiring, encouraging, and resourcing Christian leaders. You have a global conference coming up in California. Yes. Tell us about it. We're going to put the website and information okay. up for people to know about it. What's the conference and when is well, it? Well, there are about 3,000 leaders in six continents. 1,000 of them are pastors. 2,000 are government, education, and business. Right. So every year we get together. Okay. And we are getting together on October 13th through the 16th in Silicon Valley, which is San Jose, California. So strategic. And we get some presidents that come, governors, CEOs. Actually, when you compute the number of people that these 3,000 leaders influence, uh, influence yeah. or lead yeah. as either employees or church members, comes close to 3,800,000. See, that's the beautiful thing about leadership yeah. math. You know, yeah. followership, followership math is addition, but leadership math right. is not just right. multiplication, but it's yeah. exponential multiplication. Well, look at Jesus. He blessed Bartimaeus because he needed help. Yeah. But he spent it overnight with Zacchaeus because once Zacchaeus can float all the Bartimaeus. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I am so glad you came to see us. Thank you. Please return. This is Ed Silvoso, Dr. Ed Silvoso. And uh, I hope that you will follow the websites that are there on the screen and that you will find out more. And if you are someone who is wanting to get involved in transformational leadership, you may be a local church pastor or denominational leader. You may be a leader in education. You may be a leader in sports, media, the arts. You may be a leader in business. You may be a leader in a different kind of arena of life. But it, there are streams of influence with what you do. Go to this conference and be inspired and encouraged. And Ed and all the folks will be speaking there. They'll help take you to another level. Ed, God bless you. Thank you, John, and God bless you. God bless too. you.